the spooky jump scare mansion once again. So fucking warning, there's going to be scutals and skeletons and bad things that you're going to... A fright will be given to you. A scare will be had. So they, they actually, Screenwave, picked this game up for publishing. There's a few other ones they picked up. They had at the booth this year, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to play those. I think, um... However, I will say I like Use Your Words a lot. I'll tell you more. That was something I played yesterday. But I'll tell you more about that some other time. Okay, so, uh, room 701. Uh, if you missed Spooky last time, it was a lot of running through corridors while a thing chased me. Over and over and over again. But there were different types of things, and some frustrating rooms, but, um, again, every type of fucking horror game trope is covered in this game, and both made fun of and utilized. And for some reason, you guys love this shit. I mean, I do too. I actually, once I got into it, I started enjoying it a lot more. But, um... Amazed at how popular this game is with the chat. Well, maybe not necessarily the chat, but just my audience in particular, in general. So, while I'm playing, this is a good time to talk, and I can tell you that I can tell you a thing. That Nerd Crew Episode 3 is... Hang on, did the check clear yet? Oh, the best thing! Sorry, the best, very cool thing I've seen since Nerd Crew Episode 2. So remember now, this is experiments, and it's- it's- Mother Brain is in there, probably. Ah, you- what you say? What'd you say there? What are you doing? Oh! Okay, this is new. Taste the beef. What the fuck? We're in Berg Joint? Ah, yes, I'll have, um, 100% beef burg. I'll have... a McFucket. Uh, and a McJape, please. Thank you. I, I like how it says 100% beef, and it looks like the cow is in hell. Oh, it's locked? Oh, no. No, oh, I want to go in the ball pit. Take me to the fun chamber. Please! I was anxious getting a job here at first, but it seems like things are getting better. This chain is really expanding, which is a shock because just last week I heard this company was going broke. Every day more people show up to eat here. Something still sets me off about this place and its food though, so I'm going to try and not eat anything from here. That's where they keep the 100% meat. Two, today was a weird day. The average number of orders continues to rise as it has been, but I don't know about the number of people. Today I saw someone use the drive through and order a lot of food for one person. Then about 18 minutes later they were back. Sorry, 10 minutes later they were back. They ordered the exact same meals, then they left again. Then after another eight, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, they were back again. Maybe they're just delivering food for a party or a hotel, but it worries me for some reason. Like, who judges random increments of time that, like, not using the DECA system? Ah, yes, well, about 12 minutes ago, I met with my lawyer, or whatever. Oh, that, that was about 33 minutes ago, yes. 
massive key. Ooh. Um. Yeah, there's no products available for that. Sorry. Sorry, we're all out. Damn. Well, I broke my one rule today. The management doesn't give out actual lunch breaks, so I can't go anywhere. And they won't allow outside food here. I mean, they actually screamed at the last customer who did that. Anyway, I had a burger. It wasn't bad. I don't feel sick. So I might get a few every now and then. Tainted meat! Tainted meat! MAY THE RATS EAT YOUR EYES! This is strange. I had a dream last night about this restaurant. I know I was here, but I also felt like I was in another place at the same time. Everything looked so... wrong. Nothing was the right size, and I kept hearing these strange animal noises, almost like wailing. I guess I just feel guilty for eating that burger that other day. The other day. And today I saw a man- the man again, the one who kept ordering every ten minutes. This time, he never even left the parking lot. He just got his meal, parked, got him back in line. He must have done it at least eight times before he left. What, he likes Berg? You know about the dude? The Gor- what's his name? Gorksky? He- we will find you. That sounds like fun. Oh, yay. This game took a weird turn. There's a dude, like, his name is, like, Gorski. Or something, and he just ate, like, two, like, Big Macs a day. Forever. And then they, like, after he had, like, a certain amount, they gave him... ...a bunch more free burgers. There was a horrible accident today, at least that's what the managers are calling it. One of the other employees brought in some outside food and got into a fight with the manager about it. The employee said that the burgers here smell like sulfur. I then watched- that's the smell of hell. I then watched the manager grab the kid's neck and shove his head onto the grill. The employee got up and ran out before anyone could do anything. I'm told that he's fine, but that really shook me today. That's what you get when you bring in outside food to Berg Joint. Be like McGorsky. Or <laughs> Yes. I actually got hit with, um, pretty wonderful existential crisis yesterday while I was driving back from Pennsylvania. I was listening to that last podcast on the left and they were playing some, um, particularly, um, strange audio clips. Like, mysterious recordings, like the bloop, and sounds from space, and the rings of Saturn. Which I'm almost positive Damon sampled in the Gorilla song, Saturn's Bars, but I could be wrong. Um... But I'll tell you more in a second. I'm leaving. I fell asleep in my car today. After eating one of those burgers, I remember brief flashes of a man or animal coming towards me, and feeling like some huge lumbering thing was wailing from deep underground. As I continued eating. When I woke up, I was fine, but I'd veered off the road. I don't know if it's some weird allergic reaction to a preservative that they use or something much worse, but this is my last day. But space has no sound. There's some si like, type it yourself. I, I can't really explain it. I'm, I don't know if you know this, I'm not a scientist. But, you can measure a certain- there's a, a certain reading you can get off of Saturn's rings. And it's roughly translated into a sound, basically. But, um... <laughs> I'm no scientist! Why were you in PA? Um, well, you'll find out next week. It's like electromagnetic stuff they convert into sound. Yeah, so I mean, maybe I, I just explained it a little bit wrong, but, um... The idea being that the, um, the rings make a- when you- when you translate them to sound... It's- it's very... off-put- off-putting. But, um... One of the other things, number stations... Picture driving... <laughs> oh, fuck that. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh god, it's the god of fast food. 
It's El Satan. I, I love it, but I also hate it, and I want it to go away immediately. This is gonna be like, this is Guy Fieri's final form. Come on, right here. Uh, oh, fuck! Did you see that? There was no door. Fuck that. I want to tell you more about the number stations and, and the thing that, that got, gave me the intense fucking existential crisis that put me into a state that's lasted until today of thinking about my own mortality. I'll do so in a minute, and I think this is the perfect game to do so to. Okay, the doors are now, like, japing. There's a door, there's not a door, there's a door, there's not a door. So, um, now again, this is a podcast where they just, they take the piss out of it, right? They, there's a lot of levity, there's a lot of jokes, there's a lot of inappropriate jokes. It is definitely a good driving podcast for me because it keeps my interest, yet makes me laugh, and also, um, I don't know, it's just fun. So, I'm listening to these mysterious sounds. Picture you're driving on the highway. And it's dark. We're talking like Pennsylvania roads. It's real dark. And I have to put on my brights a little bit here and there. I mean, even when, well, not even the highway, that's before the highway. When, you know, when I get to the highway, you don't need your brights. But it's still fucking dark and it's desolate. And there's not a lot of cars on the road. And it's just dark forests and your thoughts. And so, I'm driving, and then they play the clip of... ...the Russian cosmonaut... ...that was this recording, this, this thing that was intercepted. And she's, um... I think it's, the, like, maybe they were testing Sputnik? And she was basically heading back to... ...the atmosphere... ...burning up. Saying shit like, I'm so hot. I'm so hot, will I make it? Am I gonna be able to make it? And it gets a little more intense, a little more intense. Now, it's not the first time I had heard that. But... Hot fucking damn. Did that just... Totally destroy me. It's not just harrowing when you're, like, at home. Yeah, fair enough, listening to it at home, but for me, I'm just, like, alone on this dark road. You know, the sky is, like, really... I can see, like, the stars and the moon more than I have in the city because the light pollution is a little bit less. And I'm just... Well... It was... it was, it was a motherfucker. It was a motherfucker. And again, I thought it was gonna be, like, there's the bloop, which is the sound from the ocean. Of this giant, like not giant, but this. Um. No. Password is cake. Hi. Thanks. People say that the bloop is a whale. Wait a minute. It says I have unlimited stamina, but I can't run anymore. God damn it, Spooky. A 
so, yeah, the bloop is interesting. It could be a whale. I mean, there's... They were talking about how it couldn't be man-made or whatever. I don't know. Then there was another one. There's some really strange sounds from space. Um, there was one... Oh, man. The one that I, I loved. I, I know this one is so and fake and, and has been fake since I, I've been listening to Coast to Coast AM when I was a kid. And it was the sounds of hell where the Russians drilled like eight miles into the earth just to see what was going on in, in that, like in, in a certain layer. And the temperatures were reaching like 2000 degrees and some of them were saying it's hollow, it's hollow. And uh, the recording is this the sounds of hell. Now listen, since we're playing a, a scary game, I'm gonna play this for you. Now again, I know all this stuff is bullshit. I mean, even the thing with the Russian cosmonauts, or a cosmonaut burning up in the atmosphere could be fake. But let's face it, this, this has happened. People have burned up trying to re-enter, and we don't know how many cosmonauts actually went up before there was success, you know? There's the, like, the lost cosmonaut theory that's very interesting. But, um... Here are the sounds of hell in Siberia from, uh... That's kind of like the best quality I could get. So, again, that's- that's totally fake. You know it's fake, I know it's fake. But driving on a dark desert highway, the cool wind in my hair, the warm smell of colitas rising up through the air, in the dark something distance, something welcome to the Hotel California. Basically, it's spooky, is what I'm trying to say, and I, um, I didn't expect that episode to, to really kind of get to me a little bit, but it did. I think it was also part of me hitting a midlife crisis at the age of 31, which means I've got another 31 years, I believe, if all goes well. But, uh, yeah, that is, that is definitely, that's definitely <laughs> one of those ones that I remembered from when I was younger. The the thing they said was that they, they put a microphone down this eight-mile hole and that was the sound they got. And the dude said he smuggled it. It was like a friend of a friend of a friend or a family member that gave it to him. And, uh, and then he managed to get it to Art Bell on Coast to Coast AM. Okay, now I can't actually... If you remember this one, I can't get too far from. Your unlimited stamina is gone. You mean my no running ability is gone? So yeah, there's, there's your, you want to talk about Spooky's House of Jump Scares. That's some real spooky stuff. Did this get a visual upgrade? Yes, it did. This is the HD version. Look at how HD it is. You can see every pixel. This is the Steam version. And I think it got ported over to Unity. So yeah, it's, it's definitely slightly upgraded. Older versions of Spooky had him in slug mode the whole time, really. The Black Knight satellite is some 12,000 year old shit in space that's just floating there. Wasn't there a... a thing in Skies of Arcadia that was like that? Like some... some weird satellite looking fucking thing that's just in the upper atmosphere of the game? 
but yeah, the Black Knight satellite is is very interesting. I like weird shit like that. Even though it's probably just like a fucking meteoroid chunk. You were just watching that? It's under the red moon. There you go. That's right. That's right. One of the legendaries in Sun and Moon is based off of the Black Knight. Keep that blood pumping. Why don't we take a look at the Black Knight? Just because it's- it's pretty, um... It's pretty amazing looking. The Black Knight Satellite Conspiracy Theory. Now again, I'm not speaking to the validity of all this. I'm sure there's research. I don't know it. I don't know how accurate these photos or, you know, where they came from. I'm sure it's maybe something NASA related. Maybe NASA took these photos. That's just it upside down, isn't it? Yeah. Here you go. I think that's, that's the photo. That's the reason they call it the Black Knight, I would imagine, because it looks like a dude on a fucking horse. To me, it looks like a dude on a speeder from Star Wars. It's Count Dooku, everyone. Um... What the fuck? Okay, that was pretty good. That actually got me. The Curse of the Black Knight. NASA says it's most likely a thermal blanket lost during a mission. So what about them donut objects around that tether? What about them tether incident? Hmm? Huh? What about the tether incident? Next you're gonna be telling me about space pillows. But yeah, I don't know, like how you could confirm that a thing is 12,000 years old. Just by, um... looking at it like that. Resident Evil? Yep. Hmm? What about them tether, though? What about them spiracies? Huh? It's all real. All of it. All of it. I can hear him coming down the hallway. I need to hide, but I don't know where. I know this is not an exit or a resting place. It's just another specimen room. I think he's outside the door now. made of Parmesan. Confirmed. Oh, I never played Clock Tower.
Yeah, if it's a clock tower reference, I, I, I wouldn't get it, sadly. This mansion is strange. I think the bricks and wood are actually just painted on. Everything still feels kind of fake. Although I keep hearing movement and voices below me, maybe other survivors are hiding down there. What's this? Wow, a mansion inside another mansion. Maybe I've made it all the way to the end of the house. Maybe this is like a resting place or another entrance, perhaps. Whatever the case, I think it's a good spot to rest. Step. Step right up. Come on, you know. Come on, it's time to go to the Mario. Please go home. Inside the box. Don't leave or you will die. somehow managed to get away, but I don't know for how long I hear him. Even when I know he's not there, it's like he isn't real, but instead my own fear manifesting it themselves and stalking me. I know that this is, again, this was developed kind of quick and dirty just to get it made. But part of me would have enjoyed if these rooms were a little bit more distinct. Just a little bit more distinct, so you can just kind of differentiate them a bit. There's a book missing. Huh. That's the only one with a book missing. You probably already know this, but this developer has a, a full-blown series horror game in the works. I did not know that. You're, are you talking about... Sheena? Charlie Sheena? Desert, please. Desert, please! Why would he say that? That's gross. I hate garbage. The trash man. 
Run and hide. Broken. Broken. No, I need to go back to the library. Library. Room 319, or, or 3910. Three. Room 910 is gonna be a real fucking pain in the ass, isn't it? Looks like the 10s are where the, the new stuff is introduced. It's a floating dirt. I guess it's supposed to be like dust in the air. Just looks like a glitched floating dirt texture to me. I have a theory. I think it's the pseudo mansion. I think it's playing with my head. I still hear him. I must find that man and kill him with the sickle I found in the forest. His victims. Right? Coming at you with a fucking sickle? Hey? Eh? I can't listen. You, you know I'm gonna say the sickle thing. Cause Bill Burr said it once. He's talking about, like, a dude coming at you with a fucking sickle. He's talking about using a 38 caliber. And, um... You know, how, how like, you're, you're home alone. You know, you're home at night. And there's someone coming at you with a fucking sickle. And Conan's like, what, what do you- why a sickle? I can never look at that word the same way ever again. I've had a number of people tell me that they really enjoyed the spooky stories thus far. Or at least me discussing and sharing my, uh, my fun existential crisis. I have weird, like, I had these weird fucking dreams. Like, I used to go up to Connecticut when I was young. Uh, my uncle had a house there for a little while. No longer. But, I used to go to Connecticut with my family, and, uh, that was... ...weird. That was around the time... Um... Fuck. 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 That was around the time that I was, uh, kind of terrified of UFOs. I I'd been watching a lot of documentaries and reading about abduction stories. I thought that was probably just the most horrifying thing ever. It's weird, ghosts... Mm, a little bit. That was a little scary for me when I was a kid. Um, ghouls? <laughs> Not so much. Goblins? Holy shit. Scroblins? That was pretty bad. But mostly the thing that scared me when I was a kid were fucking alien abduction stories. Because again, you just get lifted through your wall in the middle of the night. You don't remember it. Or you barely do. And then you get put right back where you were. It just seems like you're totally frozen. Like, th those stories... It's like a 10, 11, 12 year old. That's- that's not fun. That was definitely the thing that- that, uh... That and The Exorcist when I was like seven. Those were the things that fucked me up the most. 
but I do have these weird recurring dreams because in Connecticut, um, the, the roads were very dark, like I described in, in PA. But, um, at the time I was wondering if like, cause the, the house was in like the middle of the woods. Like, he was loaded. It was in the middle of the woods. It was surrounded. You could not see any lights of any other houses. And as someone who's from New York City, even Staten Island, the houses are really tightly compact, like next to each other. Um, but as some, as a city boy, that was not something that I was used to. And so I kept having these weird thoughts about the, the greys and abductions. What? What do you mean? Come on! I gotta do that all over again? <sighs> Fucking stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Come on, give me a second. Like, I didn't know the floating brain was gonna get out of there. I thought it was just gonna, like, die. I thought I was doing a good thing. I was taking it off life support. I was removing it from its fluids. I was trying to remove the brain from the mortal coil. I was trying to shuffle it to the choir invisible. Huh. You know, it's funny, you can't actually run away from the floating brain. Once you- once you open the thing, you're- you're committed to it. Well, alright, fair enough, I'm a dick. Oh. Hang on, I just saw... Not so serious, what's up? I think someone just like replied to her. How's games? How's working on games and stuff, yeah? I wish I worked on games. Actually, no I don't, I'm good. <laughs> I like playing them better. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, it was- it was definitely... For me, it was- it was a scary time because I kept thinking about... Ductions. And I kept, like, scaring the shit out of myself by- by watching these documentaries and watching these, like, um, reports about aliens. But I keep having this- these fucked up recurring dreams. And I know, I mean, now I don't think about it. I'm obviously- I mean, I'm, I'm fucking scared of salt. More than I am. Salt and sugar are- are my two greatest fears. More so than, um... More so than, uh, UFOs. But... Um... I stole that joke from Dave Chappelle, kinda. I didn't want to Schumer it, you know, I wanted to actually tell you where it came from. But, um... Yeah. What happened was... I have this dream where I'm kind of, like, in the woods. And the car breaks down, like, I'm driving. And it's like this big, massive grove. And, uh... The car, my car breaks down, and I get out of the car, and it's... there's... there's stuff hovering. There's, um... where... where was I going again? I really don't want to have to do this again! That was the right door. Good thing I got stories, because, boy, we're gonna need them. Let's 
so yeah that's that's the dream it's basically the same fucking woods every time and it, it reminds me of the woods in Connecticut and um, I get out of the car or I'm not in a car and the lights go off and it's just terror either the duction happens or it never happens and I'm running from the UFO like I'm running from but then my legs get like jello and I can't get away and that, that, that dream and that variation of that dream happens like every few months, I would say. What if you're having flashbacks? What, of the time that I was abducted and I'm just remembering it? No, it's fine. I mean, I can deal with it. It's a dream. It's... I figured I'd share it because we're doing spooky game. And this is the perfect time to talk about this stuff. Otherwise, lest you get bored. The key by the fireplace, did I just... Like, run away from it? I'm just so aggravated that I have to do this part again. Because of a fucking floating brain. Come on! I, I thought about it again and I got as angry as, as when it happened, if not more so. Such fucking horse shit. The key by the fireplace, right? Okay, yeah, I know where that is now. Got it. Bedroom key. That's upstairs. Local 58 on YouTube. I don't even know what that is. The abductions haven't stopped. They insert memes into your mind to see how your audience reacts. Nothing else really, like, totally terrified me. There was, um, you know, my, my family used to tell me some pretty fucked up stories of, like, stuff that happened to them. And that just made me believe, because, like, why wouldn't you believe? If you're, you know, a kid and, and the family that you love tells you things that, that happened to them and they like, I, it happened. I swear it happened. And it's like, oh, well, obviously it happened. <laughs> and it's, it's so, it, it, some of that shit scared me. Like, I think my dad told me he went to an abandoned funeral parlor and there was, um, a dude in a suit that was behind him. Not a trek suit. But yeah, like a, like a, like a guy in a suit that was just behind him and then disappeared and then reappeared. Something like that. Something fucked up like that. And, um, that one got me. Because, again, why would they lie? Then my guidance counselor told me about the conference house. The conference house. I talked about this on stream a few times. The conference house was, um, this place where, where George Washington was and General Billup. And all these dudes for the Revolutionary War, they met on Staten Island at this house. And, um, the house was supposedly haunted, right? And my, my old guidance counselor told me about this story of, he used to sleep there. 
because his his friend's mom ran the place like for tourism. And uh, you know, he used to describe seeing red coats. And just like soldiers walking by and hearing big heavy boot steps and um stuff like that. Good uh good guidance counselor. The Billup House video with the Castlevania music. Yep. That's right. So Again, you're talking to someone who's way more skeptical now. So, you know, I'm not like... This isn't stuff that I'm actually like thinking about and trying to like go on a crusade to prove it to people. Um, I know I I've had friends that were really, really adamant about... Like, you gotta believe me about this shit, man! It all happened! But for me... I have an open mind, but I also kind of view it with uh, a pretty healthy dose of skepticism because I don't really have very many personal experiences. A few, few, few noises here and there, few potential UFOs in the sky. Um, but then you have Christo, who's the dude in the documentary, The Curse of the Man Who Saw UFOs who's just constantly looking up at the sky, constantly filming. And I think if you look for these things, or if you listen for these noises, you'll find them. Does that mean they're ghosts? Or UFOs? Oh, not necessarily. But I think you will find them if you're looking for them. Ghost bust. See, now, there, there's an episode of that podcast that I want to listen to called Sexy Ghosts. I haven't heard it yet. And it is the stupidest... I've been avoiding it because that is the stupidest sounding title. Sexy Ghosts. I can only fucking imagine what that's gonna be like. Oh. Stan? No, it's just a ghost, Stan. Okay, finally. Finally, room 811. That That is a very long sequence. Even knowing what to do, I still get confused because all the rooms look the same. Or the doors, I should say. What's the podcast called? It's called The Last Podcast on the Left. I don't recommend it for everyone. There's gonna be people who listen to it, and they're gonna turn it right the fuck off. But... You know, there have been some entertaining episodes. There's also been a lot of times where I've zoned out and missed a good, sh like, half of the stuff that they're trying to talk about. I just get, it just becomes like information overload and joke overload. And, um, I just, certain topics, like, I stop caring. Like, I listened to one about remote viewing, which, um, was actually something I believe really happened within the CIA. Like, there was remote viewing and, like, attempts to... I mean, watch the movie The Men Who Stare at Goats, for, as an example. I don't know how, how fucking based in reality that is, but... Yeah, I was trying so hard to pay attention, but I, I, I zoned out for, like, 50% of it. For those that don't know, remote viewing is, um, you... They tell you to focus real hard on a smokestack in Russia. You know, and then they, they, you, you go through these exercises, and then you, you close your eyes, and then you, you focus real, real hard, and then you're able to see what's going on, and correlate things. 
and um, they were trying to use it as a spy program to spy on the Russians during the Cold War. Talk about MK Ultra. I actually don't know enough about MK Ultra. Um, I know it's a Muse song, because, I mean, you could tell Matt Bellamy that there are, like, goblins that control the oil companies that fly around in little hovering UFOs and also, like, enslave goats. And Matt Bellamy would believe it and write a few songs about it. Perhaps an entire album. So yes, we've seen this one. Floating red figure that was found inside a secret area below a large abandoned corporate office once owned by a restaurant franchise. The specimen is extremely violent and also seems to leave the house at will despite various containment methods. Victims vanish on contact with specimen, but sometimes remains of the victims have been found inside the testing chamber a few days later. Proved not effective as victims' souls do not remain after contact. <laughs> oh, you know how it is, just getting them souls stolen. Specimen 12, an old Victorian mansion that seems to build itself around its environment. The specimen sometimes chooses a host to possess and uses them to attack the subjects with various means. While like a fucking sickle? depending on the host's characteristics. Not much is known about the origin of the mansion, but signs occasionally show an earlier massacre or tragedy that has taken place within the mansion proved very effective, but varies itself too often to be a reliable method of extraction. Gotta get them souls. Method Drowning, an ancient water-dwelling creature. It's the lady in the water from M. Night Shyamalan. To be lost soul who died tragically during the deluge proved extremely effective against subjects that could not swim or fell for the se specimen's lore. It's like a siren. What do we got? Oh, hey. The person who chased you was another person going through the mansion. So like, that's like a possessed, previous spooky mansion tourist. Another fun story I remember, I, my um... My aunt lived across from... Like uh... Not really a swamp, but like... Like a thicket. Like, picture a row of houses. And on the opposite side of the houses, like across the street, was, um, just empty fields, like wetland kind of shit. Undeveloped. And I remember there being a story of someone just, just being there, staring up at her house. Just someone in- in the- that area. Just staring. And uh, on multiple nights, and multiple occasions. Why are there so many anime me emotes happening right now? Where'd they come from? Yeah, you want to talk about fucking terrifying. I mean, you don't have to believe in ghosts to want to get the cops there as soon as possible, but I... I don't remember very much of the story. Fuck that brain. Um, I wish I did. I wish I remembered the rest of it, but... My... My gut feeling tells me... That the cops were in fact called... But nothing came of it. And... There, the person just disappeared.
So yeah, I liked um I liked hearing. I used to ask my family about like their their it would scare the shit out of me for a little bit, but I didn't care. I liked it. I wanted to hear the ghost stories. I wanted to hear the spoops. For a while I liked horror movies. And I, I mentioned last time, like, there's a bunch of horror movies I actually want to see that I haven't, but... I've gotten a few good recommendations from the chat, which I appreciate. Have I seen the new IT trailer? No, I haven't, but I, I, I want to. Isn't Finn in that? Finn's in that. You have to loop the room three times, pick up the paper, then try to exit. Finn... Finn Wolfhard. Dude from, uh, Stranger Things. Good kid, that kid. I like that kid. Stephen King says he's hands-on with the filming process. Do you know for The Shining, Stanley Kubrick, there's a, there's a, a story, there's a famous story that, um, so, the, the Shining was written by Stephen King, and there are quite a few differences. In fact, from what I understand, Stephen King wasn't happy with Kubrick's adaptation for a few reasons. Um, I love the movie. I've not read the book, but I kind of want to read the book at some point. But yeah, there was some there was some weird chemistry between those two. Um, that was kind of what Kubrick used to do, though. He used to just fucking make the movie his own. He's done plenty of he he did plenty of things that started as an adaptation of like a little pamphlet. And turned into a movie. Like, Full Metal Jacket was based on, like, a- like, a very, very short story, from what I understand. But when it came to The Shining... One night, the story goes, Stanley Kubrick called up Stephen King and said, um... Do you believe in God? Or, like, he was reading, you know, he was reading the book, and he- and he said, uh, so, uh... Do you believe in God? And then Stephen King said, I do. And then Kubrick said, that's all, thanks. Hung up. And that was like, from that point forward, Kubrick just took the movie in his own direction. There's actually even, um, when you watch the movie, when Scatman Crowthers... <laughs> that's his name, that's the actor's name. Um, when Scatman is driving, and it's like a blizzard. It's like really, really snowy. There's like a car accident on the side of the road. That car is the color of Jack Torrance's car in the novel, in, in the book. Uh, Jack drives a different car, different color car, in the movie. And the theory is, that was Kubrick's way of saying, you know, this is my movie now. That's, that's Stephen King's... It's just on the side of the road in a car accident. Different Scatman. His name is- his name was just Scatman. How, how's that for a first name? A lot of auteurs tend to be major gaping prick holes, um, or a variation of what that sentence is. I, I- I think that a lot of people... 
I think a lot of perfectionists, directors, musicians, otherwise, can be extremely difficult to work with, yes. And now, we're in very dark land. Research report one. More whales are being shipped to the facility tomorrow. One for a health inspection. And two that are already dead for autopsies. More and more beached whales keep appearing around these islands and I still can't find what is causing it. Okay. Um... How the fuck does that work? Research report 2. Whale 14D has strange small bite marks. They appear from another smaller mammal, but the strangest thing about them is their placement. They're in an even rows inside the whale's stomach, all about five feet from the bottom of the stomach lining. Whale 15A is still alive, but gets into fits of thrashing and in and is surfacing more often than natural. Holy shit, Death Stranding? I think there may be a problem with its lungs, but I don't have any tools that would allow me to check it without it dying. I will have to allow it to die from whatever is causing it, and then do an autopsy. And then I watched carelessly as the sea rose above the sky casting waving shadows over the world. I saw the silhouettes of creatures both familiar and forgotten, and suddenly I found myself falling upwards towards an ocean of darkness. Okay. I guess I gotta start looking for a code. Four one three two. Five six four three. Yeah, right. Research report six. I hear a girl or an animal or something singing to me, pleading. I come outside my locked room and let the sweeping waves comfort me. Whale 15D has died much sooner than I expected. This is weird, the whale caves? While I was on away on holiday, I regret not being there, but I've estimated it would have... It would live... Okay. I regret not being there, but I had estimated it would live much longer. <laughs> the team that did the autopsy said nothing seemed to be wrong with the lungs, but the stomach had a circular hole about two feet in diameter all the way through the outside of the whale. This pretty much confirms a parasite is the cause of death. Nice sprite. Um... Yeah. It's the bloop. It's amazing, all you have to do is juxta juxtapose spooky ambient noises with whale. And you already, you, you have the recipe for spookiness. The lantern got snuffed out. Research report seven. All the staff is gone, only I remain. For no purpose I remain here, resisting the call from behind a sealed door. But I will remain as long as I can. Don't open that door. Oh, yeah, you probably want me to open this one? Ah! Oh, 
Oh, uh, which, uh, which, which door? You know, uh, get me through that one, hey? Please. Please, I got, I got business to attend to. You know what I mean? Please. Thanks. Problem here. Yep. Don't think I like that very much, you know. So we're just gonna that that get your stream banned, you know. Ah, we don't need to look around. You know what I mean? Just uh, just uh, oh, hey, hey, just get get go through the door. You know what I mean? Please. Please. Okay. Please! Please! <laughs> oh, fuck. This reminds me quite a bit of amnesia. Granted, it's been a few years since I played that game, but, uh... Just, just surviving, box to box. How's it going? How's it going? Um... So, so did she kill the whales? Can we, uh... Can we get Captain Kirk and the crew of the Enterprise to, uh... to save him? Just gotta play their song back to them. I've said this before, but, but by God, that is one of the best Star Trek movies still to this day. Spock. They're doing a remake of it with J.J. Abrams. Please leave. Benedict Cumberbatch as the whale. It's gonna be a movie about revenge. You know, a simple little story where they try to, you know, save, save the fucking whales. Because it's a weird future probe thing. There's no... weird revenge plot. But they're gonna have one. And then Spock is gonna punch the whale over and over and over again while screaming. The emotionless Vulcan. Sorry, half Vulcan. But still, JJ, are you out of your Vulcan mind? At least in Star Trek Beyond, Spock behaved a bit more like Spock. All right, listen, listen, we're too, okay, listen, we're, we're going back into Star Trek talk. No one wants to hear about this shit, okay? But you see, you show me a whale, you show me a whale, my mind, like the neural pathways rub together, and then they hear Star Trek, and they think, oh, Star Trek IV, the best Star Trek movie. 
The one where they saved the whale. Because it's a fish out of water story, so to speak. You know? I mean, it's- they're- the crew is back in the 80s, and they have to deal with, like, rude 80s people. And, like, you know, money. And, like, they take a bus. And it's- it's great. It's great to see how they react to all that stuff. And it was directed by Leonard Nimoy. Which is another reason why I love that movie so much. So what were we talking about? Spooky things? Horror things? I know whales aren't fish, for fuck's sake. They're mammals. But man, now I want to see Spock punch a whale. Like a CG whale. Do I have a night terror story? I do, I have a few. There were- there were a few times where I was... ...meditating. And I heard like a weird demonic voice. Years ago. Twelve... Twelve years ago, so... Yeah. Eleven. Eleven or twelve. So, um... One time I was- I was meditating, because I- I learned to meditate because I, like many other humans, was an anxious ball of nerves when I was in my late teens, early twenties. What a surprise. And I, um, it actually really helped, but I- I think I was trying to, like, really, like, I wanted to know who built the pyramids. Now, I'm joking, but I kind of wanted more than I, I needed. If that makes sense, it probably won't. And so, I remember, um, yeah, uh, one time I heard a demonic voice, and another time I, I heard someone in my head say to me, What are you afraid of? That was probably just my mind playing tricks on me, but it was, it was a little weird, and I remembered it. It was definitely something that stood out. And another, I mean, night terrors we'll talk about. <clears throat> my friend, growing up, one of my best friends had some fucking severe night terrors. Like, he was held down. Oh boy. And he used to really, like, he said his house... <laughs> he said his house was haunted, and he, he swore by that. And he said that he could not get out of his bed. On a number of occasions. And he, he used to, I mean, on, on a few, I remember, like, you, you know, you would put your keys down, and they would, like, be moved. They would be in a different spot than where you put them. So, not very powerful, these ghosts. They, they had a very limited spectrum of what they could, um, interact with. Mostly just house keys and being dicks. But he swore that th he had some pretty nasty night terrors and he couldn't move. I it happened to me on a few occasions. I, I had... I wouldn't have necessarily chalked them up to ghosts holding me down. But there were a few occasions where I was like in that weird twilight between waking and sleeping state. And... I just couldn't move. Like my muscles did not respond to my brain's commands. It's like a sleep paralysis thing. Um... More than a night terror. I mean, I've woken up in cold sweats. Um, I, I don't know, has anyone here never had a nightmare ever? I want to ask what you mean specifically by night terrors, but I'm just curious. I have plenty. Yeah, I, I think... Most people in chat that are saying, I've never had a nightmare. I mean, is that even really a thing? Is that, like, possible? I know there's people that say they don't dream. But I've always wondered if... Is it possible to just live a life where you... You just dream, don't dream, and that's it. No nightmares. 
So, um, tell me what you mean necessarily by, um... What, what do you mean by night terrors, exactly? Refresh me. We're not talk talking about, um, nocturnal emissions. As in Troll 2, the movie. Chat's going real quick. Everyone wants to share their story, which is cool, but it's just such a fast chat right now. You f um... Feelings of great fear experienced on suddenly waking in the night. So waking up in a cold sweat. Episodes of screaming, intense fear, and flailing while you sleep. Um, no. I can't say screaming or flailing, but uh, definitely waking up with an immense and uncanny feeling of, of fucked upness is the way I'll explain it. <clears throat> also, I woke up pretty early today, so I'm already getting kind of tired. But, yeah, I would- I would definitely say I've had... Oof. God damn it. I've- I've had some really fucked up dreams, and I've had... ...things that have happened in dreams that I- I- Wow. What an asshole. That I don't even remember what they were, but they would definitely wake me up. And I would just know that something fucked up happened in the dream, but I, I couldn't remember what it was, so. I don't get nightmares too often. I mean, I, I get, like I said, some just general anxiety before bed, like probably most people do. And sometimes that turns into a fucked up sleeping experience with some really, like, odd scenarios. Or my favorite is thinking about, like I said a few weeks ago, Thinking about everything I've ever done wrong. That's a good time. Just before bed, you know, when you have to get up early and do cool shit the next day. And then your dreams start reflecting all the mistakes you've made in life. That's- oh man. That is good shit. But nightmares, that's- that's pretty infrequent. I mean... The nightmares I have, like I said, there's them alien nightmares every few months, sometimes less. Sometimes I don't have them for a while. There's the nightmares of, um, not being prepared for a test. I still have those. There's a, the nightmare of me not attending a class forever, and then having to go to the class and explain what was happening. So I just don't go to the class, because I skipped a lot of classes my first few years of college. So I still have, like, guilt dreams about that. And then there's also dreams I have of, um... Just... just not completing school. Like, being short, like, two credits. And having to spend money for an extra semester. I know. Lame. Anyway, nine... Nine... Nine. Room... One thousand. Here it is, the exit. Um, the exit. <laughs> Whoa. It's magic. It's a land of eternal nothingness. And sky boobs. Vista sky fatal error. Fuck! Fake sky screensaver has been disabled.
So now you must pass one final test to prove your fortitude or dedication. What? No more tests. No more. Taking all those logs they keep throwing out and unveiling them together. Uh, seven, seven, three, one. Fucking hell. Fuck, this is like a pillar of souls. I did not expect this game to actually have a boss battle. <laughs> and the axe controls are a little, uh... A little wonky. Because, you know, it's- it's more about... You have to hold down the button and let go to swing the axe. So yeah, I just definitely wasn't expecting a boss fight. Wait a minute. Do I have to do what I think I have to do to those balls? So basically, this is a Cronando fight. Shit, guys, look, it's the end of Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I decided to defeat Ganon early, sorry. I mean, can an axe really defeat hell? Oh, that's that's quite a few hands. Yay! I killed a piece of meat. I know you'll make a fine specimen. Wait, what? <laughs> How do I get the good end? I don't want to be a specimen. I...
To get the good end, you use the axe too much during the game. You killed too many enemies. I've killed like a few enemies. I, I destroyed cardboard with the axe. I fucking- I killed cardboard! Ah, uh, Alright, fine. Listen. Let's, um, let's take a look on YouTube with- You know, I mean, no, let me go get the, the good ending by playing the whole game all over again. Spookies. Jump scare. HD. Good ending. A second. Uh, I'm wondering if there's a let's play of this or there's like just the ending without commentary. That'd be cool. You don't need someone like me. Give me a sec, guys. I'm gonna eh, do this. This is uh, this is it. This is the good end. At least the music was pretty good. The end was based on the swings during just the final boss. It's just the final boss. Let's see. Well, it doesn't really matter now. I found something. Um, and I'll even shout out the person who did the video. It's not just the final boss. It's everything except the final boss. Okay, good good conflicting information. The believe it or not, the person whose video I'm watching is Joe Bell the Greatest. Well, you died. In a pretty tragic way, too. Wait, just you died? For you to become a ghost. Good job, by the way, making it this far. So buckle up, soldier, because now I finally think we have enough troops to invade. Fucking Paco Bell's cannon. The time has come, my loyal troops. No longer shall we be called cute or adorable. No longer will we be disregarded and ignored. <laughs> For now, we are the most feared army in the world. Oh my god. The Great Skeleton Wars have begun. Okay, now that's not even... That's not even the proper ending. Or was it? Is there yet another ending? Um, you missed some stuff before it. Okay. That's the ending. There's a secret to get it, um, the ending to look like that. Oh, I see. I see there's four endings. Um, I'm seeing 55 endings. Oh, come on. All right, let's, let's see what's going on here. Yeah, that's the one. That seems to be the main one. There's a different ending for every time you swing the axe. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I've had enough. I've had enough chat for one day. 
and then Jeff says every ending is a new beginning. Jeff, I swear to God. I swear to God, Jeff, do not tempt fate. <laughs> no, mate, there's like billions and billions of endings, yeah? Nah, it's mental. You've got to check it out. You plant the seed and then it like, grows into an ending mountain. Oh, it's fucking bonkers, gov. Fucking amazing. Mental. All right, I've had enough. Um, I've got... Uh, I've got bad news. I don't think I want to stream Zelda now. Because the, between this and Animal Crossing, I thought we, I was going to do Animal Crossing for an hour. I thought I was going to do this for an hour. I started about 10.30. I was going to stop at 2.30. Um, I got to pass on Zelda. <laughs> 